Hi YouTube, Canadian Prepper here. Just going to present to you a compendium of cardiovascular exercise and basically give you an overview of you know how it might pertain to disaster preparedness, what different types of cardiovascular exercises you can do depending on which stage you're at in your training, and different ways to motivate yourself to do it. So I know a lot of people struggle with staying motivated to doing uh, different types of endurance training just because of the fact that it is quite monotonous it's um, you know it's something which can be kind of boring if you don't do it right and you don't switch it up enough so we'll talk a bit about that before I really dive into that though I just want to present to you a commonly understood uh, scientific breakdown of <coughs> the various types of training and so we'll just start from the bottom here. So we have moderate activity, and this is just off Wikipedia. I'm by no means uh, any kind of expert or anything like that, but I do research this stuff day in and day out. So um, you can take it from me. This is uh, certified. Uh, this is a recognized model for fitness. So moderate activity, that's your warm-up. Weight control. Um, so if you're just trying to burn weight, you have a high body fat percentage, like I was talking about in the last video, if that's over, you know, 20, 20 to 25% for female, or 15% and up for male, then you should probably be focusing on these two areas. Perhaps to start with, you'll just keep a moderate heart rate of, you know, depending on how old you are, in between this zone here. So here we have beats per minute. Here we have the, um, I'm sorry, here we have the beats per minute listed, and this is the age. So what this is saying, that if you're 40 years old and you're doing weight loss training, you should try to achieve a heart rate of 108 beats per minute on average. That's just, if you're pushing into the cardio zone and your heart rate is too high, you you escape the simple burning of fat and you're getting more into the training your heart and your lungs to perform better. So once you get into that, that's the whole difference between aerobic and, and non-aerobic activity is that you're actually, it's kind of like a resistance training for the heart in a sense. Um, that you're actually training those muscles. You're not really training that so much when you're just ha when you're just exercising for long term with a uh, with a low heart rate. So this would be like things like walking, um, stuff like that. Aerobic activity is what we're primarily going to be talking about today. We're, although we're going to be talking about these three levels um, also, but primarily focusing on this one here which is the cardiovascular and endurance training. And this is the one that people typically struggle with. People usually don't have a problem putting in, you know, uh, an audio book and going for a walk. And a lot of people have fun going to the gym and doing the heavy weight resistance training, which is what anaerobic exercise typically is. But a lot of people struggle here. They view it as monotonous and, and uh, kind of hard to do. But... I'm going to hopefully convince you that this is one of the best things that you can do for disaster preparedness or just for your general health overall. Um, you can reduce the rate of heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes by 50% if you simply partake in a regular cardiovascular exercise regimen. And if your aim is to outlast and survive the longest and be the healthiest then I always come back to the simple fact that your body and your mind of course should be your priority number one above all above all other things if the task is to outlast then your body is your temple and you gotta keep it clean and you gotta keep it strong so I'll briefly uh, just do a little switcheroo here. Yeah. 
And of course, I don't have my notes set up. So, see that? I'm at the office here doing this. So, hopefully, you can see all those. Um, so, for the beginner types of cardiovascular exercise, um, So brisk walking is a good one. Uh, jogging, what I call walking, what, this is what I did when I was first uh, started exercising. I, uh, like I said, was a smoker for 15 years, so it was hard for me to have any sort of endurance off the, when I first started. So walking is simply a combination of walking and jogging, and basically it's you know you do a light jog until you really you know you can't go anymore and then you just walk a bit and so it's really um, it's kinda like sprinting for like the severely out of shape it's not sprinting at all it's just uh, it's walking essentially uh, light hiking so it's good to try to switch it up to do a little bit of cross-country stuff if that is available to you to incorporate a bit of nature into the mix um, I don't know if that's not available to you just trying to you know take the uh, take the less beaten path wherever possible and urban hiking is is also another option I mean training yourself to the different types of terrain be it asphalt or dirt or you know greenery is uh, is all going to be beneficial for sure the elliptical machine is a great way to burn fat and it's a great way to uh, regulate your heart back because you get that biofeedback from the machines. That's the one good thing I'll say about machines is the biofeedback, um, the, the ability for that to know exactly how fast you're going and you know what your heart rate is and I know there's a lot of technology you can buy nowadays to incorporate that into any one of these movements. but it is uh it's a great machine because not a great machine for functional fitness per se but it's a great machine because it enables you to move your whole body and it's well, it's a good machine if you're a cross country skier for obvious reasons or even a snowshoer because you're you know you're using your upper body strength a bit for the movement but it's a great way to uh, just get your whole body moving and you're going to burn more calories on it than you will on a treadmill simply because you're using your whole body and your heart rate is going to be lower so I'd encourage or going to need to be lower so I encourage people if you're just starting out don't be afraid to hit up the elliptical machine it's a great weight loss tool and uh, try it out even though you know it's nothing you really want to go hard on kind of look ridiculous if you were, you know, going for your uh, your VO2 max on the elliptical machine. The rowing machine is another machine that is available in some gyms. It's essentially how it sounds. It's It simulates the task of rowing a boat with two paddles and it's good for the lats. It's a good, uh, it's good for the legs. It's really a full body exercise and it is one of the few exercises you can do for cardiovascular that really brings in the whole body into the movement. Moving up to the intermediate level there's the stair climber machine and one general rule with the stair climber machine please don't do this don't be a stair climber noob and prop yourself up with your arms when you're on the stair climber. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen and I can't stand what people do at the gym I just kind of want to go up to them and give them my two cents. Uh, you, they prop themselves up on the machine, and that basically means that they have to spend twice as long to get the results they would in half the time. Would they just not do that? And if you ever used one, or if you see one, or if you go and use one, you'll know exactly what I mean. Because you're going to want to prop yourself up onto the onto the machine, and you can. If you want, you could incorporate a weighted vest into that movement. Uh, it's just a great functional movement. It's good for leg strength. There's a bit of a resistance aspect, depending on how 
heavy you are also, the heavier you are, the more of a resistance-based exercise vertical climbing is going to be. There's also vertical elliptical machines which would fall into this intermediate category as well. X hiking is just sort of backcountry hiking which is you know on a rough path or potentially no path at all just kind of going through nature as it is and I'm not sure I'm sure most people have you know tried to traverse through unbroken territory and it's not easy um, bushwhacking is the more advanced version of this and I'll get to that in a bit X hiking is you know steep climbing um, you know really getting out into nature out to like a, a park a major park like a national park regional park or something like that and you know doing some real hiking where you put the backpack on and that kind of stuff uh, intermediate would be anything any variation of these movements that include a weighted vest or a backpack uh, the backpack can be loaded down with, you know, as much weight as you can bear, you know, within moderation, because you are going for endurance, so if the weight is too heavy to start, maybe drop the weight a bit so you can at least get half an hour, 45 minutes in. Sprints are a great uh, anaerobic exercise, actually, so it is more of a type of resistance training, but it's definitely going to increase the capabilities of your cardiovascular system in doing it and it's going to really elevate your heart rate a lot and that will gains in that area will translate into gains in your endurance so the the higher you can take your heart rate in those uh, anabolic type exercises like that uh, the better off your cardiovascular system is going to be also Plyometrics, you can Google that. There's all sorts of different plyometric exercises, how-to videos on YouTube. It's essentially using your uh, lower body. It's jumping exercises, essentially. Resistance type slash high intensity cardio. It's similar to aerobics in a lot of ways, only a bit more emphasis on explosiveness and power. Getting into the advanced category, um, cross-country jogging. So, you know, that's just, like as, as it sounds, it's, uh, whereas it's kind of like cross-country X hiking. I, I suppose I could have written that. Bush hike, bushwhacking is essentially going into a forest and um, trying to, you know, cut through that forest. Uh, it's not easy and it's very, very annoying, frustrating, depending on how thick the bush can be, and just improving your skills in that respect so you know, you know, uh, they call it root finding, just, you know, increasing your root finding capabilities, knowing, you know, uh, which way just through intuition is going to be easier to go and which way would be more complicated. Parkour and free running are essentially jogging with the obstacles, urban obstacles typically as there's not, you could probably do free running in nature although it's going to be more like cross country jogging um, and you could do, you know, you could jump on rocks and stuff like that, there just isn't as as many feasible obstacles in nature as present themselves in an urban environment high intensity interval training, I'm not going to really waste too much time explaining what that is but you can research it um, CrossFit would fall into this category, but that, that in itself is also a strength and hypertrophic um, functional system. Hill sprints are another, so it's that's sort of like stair climber machine, only you know going faster, and uh, it's essentially doing sprints but on a hill. And the punching bag is I uh, only reason why I put it in the advanced category is because it does take a bit of dexterity and agility in order to accomplish that you might have to at least have you know pass these levels before you can really get in a good advanced punching bag cardiovascular workout I still struggle with the punching bag workout just because it does take um, a knowledge of boxing to some degree